Simple everyday moments. Preparing a meal, eating, entering a car, or even taking cards out of a wallet. These things can present unexpected challenges for many people around the world. But these aren't just challenges. They're opportunities for better design, smarter tools, and real positive change. Since 2020, my team and I have had the pleasure of hosting the Make Able Assistive Technology Design Challenge, where thousands of students, designers, and makers have used 3D printing to design low-cost, custom products for people with disabilities. As more people step into this space, I want to share some top tips for designing impactful and delightful assistive devices. So first of all, let's talk 3D printing, and how it's completely changing the way we approach product design. With the ability to create complex and customized forms in just a matter of hours, it really breaks free from the limitations of mass-produced one-size-fits-all solutions. Now don't get me wrong, mass production has its place, but when it comes to assistive technology, where every disability and person comes with very different and very specific needs, a one-size-fits-all approach simply isn't good enough. And it's not just about basic functionality, so 3D printing thrives on customization, so there's a really special opportunity here to give people with disabilities a voice and a choice in things like color, texture, trends, and style, and to create products that don't just work well, but are a joy to use. So with that, let's dive into the tips. Understand your constraints. So take a moment to think about three key things. How much time do you have? What skills does your team bring to the table? and what equipment and materials are available to you. As you move through the design process, you can add to these constraints, but remember, they aren't limits to your creativity, they're simply guidelines. And understanding your constraints helps you set realistic goals, avoid overpromising, and focus on what's actually achievable. Lead with empathy. So when designing assistive devices, it's really easy and natural to jump straight into those ideas and you more than likely already have some initial concepts in mind. But here's the thing, try not to make assumptions. What works in theory or what you think will work might not work in someone's real life. So start by listening. Talk to your end user, ask thoughtful questions and pay attention to those small details. Things like interviews, observations or even casual conversations can reveal insights you'd never guess otherwise. But don't stop at the disability, get to know the person or the people. So learn about their lifestyle, their daily routines, their interests, and even their favorite colors or hobbies. These details aren't extra, they're essential. And then let those insights guide your design choices because the best solutions don't start with an idea, they start with understanding. Go wide with ideas and avoid the temptation to fall in love with that very first one. The most effective designs often come from brainstorming a broad range of different possibilities and then merging promising concepts together. Try to think of ideas that are completely different from each other by approaching the problem from multiple different angles. And don't be afraid to step outside the obvious. Sometimes the most unexpected connections lead to those brilliant light bulb moments. As you generate ideas, research the market. While the goal might be to create something novel, looking at existing devices has very clear advantages. It can start you from reinventing the wheel, it can spark fresh ideas about how to improve or adapt existing solutions, and it can highlight gaps where your design could offer something completely new. Think of market research as a springboard, as a way to build on what's already out there and to create something that's even better. Prioritize. While it's important to go wide with ideas, it's equally important to narrow them down. So with each idea, ask yourself, does it meet the needs of the end user? Does it offer something new or add value beyond what's already available? And is it achievable with your time, skills and resources? Design tools like priority diagrams, where you map out ideas and design criteria in order of importance, can be incredibly useful for guiding your next steps and focusing your energy where it really matters most. There are countless ways to approach the concept development stage of the design process, and we highly recommend that you work to your strengths. If you excel in product sketching, lean into drawing to explore your ideas. If hand modeling is your thing, spend more time experimenting with cardboard or clay. And a great example of this is Charles and Ray Eames, who often prioritise photography and model making over traditional illustrations when designing their iconic furniture pieces. And if you're working in a team, take the time to understand everyone's strengths and figure out how to make the most of them. Collaborate. 
not just within your team, but also beyond it. So reach out to people outside of your group. This might be occupational therapists, designers, or anyone who can offer valuable expertise and fresh insights. And these outside perspectives can really help with noticing things that you might not have considered before. And remember, your most important collaboration should be the person or people you're designing for. So include them as much as possible at every stage of the process. A good way to think of it is to design with them and not just for them. When it comes to prototyping, don't be precious and definitely don't aim for perfection right away. Consider starting with quick, rough prototypes that focus on key features or functions. For example, if your design has a key mechanism, try prototyping just that section first, and that's gonna save you a lot of time, material, and frustration later down the line. Most importantly, treat every prototype as a learning opportunity. Analyze what works, what doesn't, and use those insights to refine your design step by step. Prototyping isn't about getting it right on the first try, it's about learning fast and improving often. Make it personal. Personalization can make an assistive device go from useful to truly meaningful, and it can come in many different forms. Aesthetic personalization might include names, colors, or favorite characters. Functional personalization, on the other hand, could mean designing a perfect fit device tailored to someone's specific physical needs or adjusting features to match their daily routines. And whether it's about style, fit or function, personal touches show thought and care. Turning a product into something that truly feels like it belongs to the person using it. Make it desirable. Just like personalization, making a product desirable goes beyond functionality. It's about creating something people are proud to use. So think about trends, style and fashion, whether it's bold colors, interesting shapes or a sleek minimal design, aim to create something that feels exciting to own and show off. You might even consider giving your product a name and adding some branding, and these small touches can transform a design from just another tool into something with personality and presence. Design for 3D printing. When creating your CAD models, it's important to keep the strengths and limitations of 3D printing in mind. Things like avoiding steep overhangs and using wall thicknesses that align with your printer's nozzle diameter. These small adjustments can reduce print failures, improve part quality, and save time on reprints and fixes. But don't just focus on the constraints, embrace the opportunities too. 3D printing lets you create shapes and forms that are absolutely impossible with traditional manufacturing, and it also enables part consolidation. So don't be afraid to explore, experiment, and push the boundaries of what's possible. Think about the bigger picture. The assisted device you design doesn't just have the potential to help one person. It could benefit countless others through open source sharing. But open source isn't just about placing your files online. It's about making it as easy as possible for others to recreate, remix, and customize your design to fit their needs. And this might mean creating clear maker and assembly guides, optimizing your design files for easy editing, and sharing your design rationale so others can build on your work with clarity and purpose. Keep it simple. One of the most important things to remember in design, and my personal favorite tip, is to avoid overcomplicating or over-engineering your solution. Sometimes the most effective answers are also the simplest. A clean, straightforward design is often easier to use, easier to make, and far more reliable. So when in doubt, strip it back and focus on the essentials. As we enter this new age of assistive technology design, the possibilities are absolutely endless, and the impact feels more meaningful and personal than ever. I hope these tips help you in your journey to create designs that not only solve problems, but also bring joy, confidence, and independence to those who use them. Thanks for watching and happy designing.